You ready for the word? I love preaching the word of truth because it's able to change us, restore us, make us whole and make us free people. If you know the truth, the truth shall make you free in Jesus name. So I want to talk today on what I consider a very timely word for many people. And I want to talk about it's time for a comeback. It's time for a comeback. The truth is we can all suffer loss and injustice and whatever else in life and then need to make a comeback into the will and purpose of God and not get lost in the swamps of, you know, misery and everything else. And uh, right at present around the world, God's shaking His church. Man, COVID was a shaking. And uh, not only that, but many other things. God is shaking His church. Number one, to deal with uh, sin and stuff that needs to be dealt with. But two, to realign the church. Bring it into this the model for this end times. And so God's doing a lot of stuff. And, and I've watched uh, with sadness, to be honest, some leaders that have been wonderful friends of mine and people uh, in great leadership around the nations. I've watched them literally be shaken from their role in the church. And uh, I've watched with sadness as, as they've struggled to make a comeback. God said uh, to me, you need to preach on it. There are many people, not just high profile leaders or uh, church leaders or whatever else, but many people at all different levels of life that have suffered difficult losses, readjustments, injustice, whatever it might be called, and they need to now make a comeback because this is a, an incredible supernatural season in God where the church is going to literally blitz it and maximize this season to see God do the most amazing things around the world. And many, many people need to stop licking their wounds and genuinely make a comeback in Jesus' name. And I want to help you today to do that. And I'm taking the illustration of King David in his journey toward becoming king. And we pick up a, the story of David in 1 Samuel 21, verse 10 to 15. 1 Samuel 21, verse 10 to 15. It says this, Then David arose and fled that day from before King Saul. And he went to Achish, the king of Gath, and the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the whole land? Did, not, did they not sing of him to one another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands? Now when David heard these Philistines talking this way about him, he took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Achish, the son of Gath, the king of Gath. And so listen to what he did. So he changed his behavior before the Philistines and he pretended madness in their hands. And he scratched on the doors of their city gates and let his saliva fall down on his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Look, you see, the man is insane. Why have you brought him to me? Have I need of madmen that you have brought this fellow to play madmen in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? What an incredible place to be. And I, want, I want you to see the sorry plight of David acting mad at the gates of the Philistines. Let's just do a quick resume of his, his uh, incredible promotion over a short period of time. He went from being a shepherd boy to a giant killer, killed Goliath, and all of a sudden everyone knew his name. 
Then he went. And Saul said, come and live in my house and uh, I'll raise you up to be a great leader and warrior. So he went from a giant killer to being an army general in the army. And then he went from being an army general by having incredible victories to being becoming a national legend. Man, everyone was singing his praise. It was everywhere. And then it all just went pear-shaped and he went from being a national legend to running from injustice. Saul, King Saul got jealous, tried to kill him numbers of times, put a hit out on him, and so he had to flee for his life. So he went from being a legend to a, a, a person running from Saul's injustice. And then he ends up as a fugitive, scratching on the gates of the wicked, begging for mercy. How the mighty have fallen. You might not be a king over a great corporation or a worldwide church, or, but you may be over a family. You may be in your little sphere of influence, whatever that may look like. You may have reached a little bit of success and all of a sudden it's come crashing down in these uncertain times. You need to make a comeback. And I want you to see how comebacks happen in a person's life. David had to do this. I've had to do this numbers of times in my life as I've come through some of these difficult things similar to this in my own life. I've had to come back from that in instead of clawing at the gates of the world and wickedness, I've had to claw my way back into the things of God and make a comeback. Here's the first thing that you need to know about comebacks. Comebacks begin with a decision. If you want to make a comeback, you have to make a decision. And here's the decision to ask the right questions. To ask the right questions. That's how a comeback begins. God can restore you if you'll make a genuine comeback. Here's the three questions I think have to be answered by anybody that wants to make a comeback in God. The first one is, why am I here? I'm at the gates of the world, scratching, looking for, asking for mercy, looking for a, an opportunity to keep me alive. Why am I here? Now, most people say, well, I, I was done an injustice. It's her fault. It's the church's fault. It's the people's fault. They become a victim and, and don't ask the right question. Why am I here? And if you'll ask that question, you'll be amazed at what the Holy Spirit reveals to you. The truth is, deep down under all this, God allowed this to happen to David to pre prepare him to become king of the nation. And he had to deal with some stuff in David's life where he got this rocket promotion to be a legend in the community and it went to his head. God said, I can't let him be king until he understands how to serve me in humility. And so why am I here? Most times, if we're honest, I think I got a bit proud. I think I overstepped the mark. I think maybe it went to my head. I think, uh, you know, I'm just too young and made some dumb decisions. Why am I here? Get honest about that and you can start a comeback. Until then, you'll wander around like a loser, scratching on every little opportunity, trying to be a big shot in another situation. Why am I here is number one. Second question you have to ask is, what is God doing with me? Not what is God doing with others or what have others done to me? What is, you know, they, they just, you know, whatever. And it's always somebody else. No, what is God doing with me? If you believe you're called, have a great destiny. I would suggest, and I know it in my own life, God is working on the inside of you to get you ready for greater things. A comeback to the purpose and call of God that is 
It, it, gifts and callings of God are without repentance. They don't change. What has to change is you. What is God doing with me in this situation? And then the third question is, how can I come back from this? And here we answer the first, the, the third question here. He's come to the point, how can I come back from this? I have the call of God on my life. I know you're working in me, God. And he makes a decision right there out of the third question. How can I come back from this? I need to escape from this present marsh, mire, place of confusion, victimized attitudes. I've got to escape from this situation and leave it behind if I'm ever going to grow and come back in God. Some of you are still whinging and complaining, full of bitterness over your marriage breakdown, over your health, over your church, halving during COVID, all this kind, you're still lamenting, blaming, criticizing, stewing over it. No, you, you've got to make a, a decision out of these questions. God, you're working something. He that's begun a good work in me shall complete it before his return. Therefore, I've got to escape this place of sympathy. Le le I've forgotten which word I was trying. What's it? What is it? I've forgotten it. Got to escape this place and make a start on your comeback journey in God. And so this scripture that we read here, it says this, David therefore departed from there, the gates of Gath, and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. He escaped to the cave of Adullam. He got out of this place that was only going to take him deeper into the mire of defeat and nonsense. He said, I've got to get out of this. I'm no good to God or anyone else while I live in this place of absolute losing status. And so he escaped from there, found a little cave, a Dullam's cave or a little fortress. They turn them into little hiding places. And so here we now see David. He's made a decision to start his comeback journey. And he's now hiding in a small cave, not far from his greatest victory. He can look out the front of this little cave where he's hiding for his life and see the place where he defeated Goliath. I've sat with preachers who said, see that church, I lost that church. They rebelled. It's like they're sitting in a little cave and looking at their greatest victory. I did that. I brought that to pass. I can do it again. And they missed the whole point of God wanting to re-engineer their life for a new season. And so he's looking and saying, man, what have I lost in this little cave? Second thing about comebacks. Firstly, comebacks come from making a decision. Secondly, comebacks are assigned to others that they can come back as well. One of the things I notice in church at present, with all the crazy stuff, with all of the woke, with all of the progressive, with all of the half-baked nonsense going on, there's a lot of disillusioned people that have been hurt and are licking their wounds in bitterness and disarray and defeat, saying, what the heck is the use of this any longer? God uses people that come out of defeat and decide to make a comeback and get on the comeback journey it helps other people say, if they're coming back, I can come back too. Listen to what the scripture says. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard about David leaving Gath, running from that, they went down to the cave to be with him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, everyone who was discontented, all of the people that have had a, ma a major upheaval in their life, they gathered to.
to David. We want to be with you, David. We want to, you're, you're going to make a comeback. We want to come back with you. I love that. Some of the greatest leaders I know are people that have survived incredible misfortune, injustice, all kinds of the ravages of life, whether sickness or, you know, whatever. Some of the greatest people I know wear the scars of a season of failure and yet have come back. And uh, their ability to gather people out of brokenness is amazing. And listen, take heart. If God's bringing you back from a season of disarray and difficulty, that's because there's so many people that are broken and disillusioned in debt and discontent and everything else. They need a comeback, King. I like that. They need a comeback king. Who would have ever thought they'd call Jesus the comeback king? He left to die, humbled, defeated in every way, and yet he rose again, triumphant. And they hailed him when he returned to him. Here's the comeback king. And this is a word for someone today. God's speaking to you. I want you to be a comeback king, a comeback father a comeback wife and mother, a comeback family. I want you to be a comeback king for the future because many people are watching you to see how you fulfill this journey, this comeback journey. Listen, if you want to come back, you've got to stop blaming the ones you leave, those that treated you badly, those that booted you out, those that whatever, ripped you off. You've got to stop blaming the ones that you've left and you've got to start loving the ones you're with. You've got to start loving the ones you're with. And I think part of the comeback journey for any person in any level of leadership, start with your family first. I can imagine the incredibly honest and transparent talks that David had with this motley crew of misfits as they sat around the campfire at the opening to their little cave, I can imagine the talks that David had with them. I messed up. I got a big head. I, I didn't treat you guys that well. I was so caught up with, with the, the regal and royal element of leading and triumphing I, I forgot about you you're my family my friends I just want to make a new commitment to you guys start loving the ones you're with and begin with your family don't make it come back to a position no, make it come back to the call of God and if he's given your family that's your first mission your comeback always will give others hope if you come back in a godly manner. Another thing about comebacks, it's not just to get back to where you were and have the same level of affluence or whatever else. Comebacks begin the journey back to greatness, the destiny call of God on your life. Your comeback, if it's godly and done the right way, will bring you back on the journey to greatness. And this is what it says of these 400 people. So David became captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. David used to slay, kill more than that in one little battle. He triumphed so incredibly. And he had tens of thousands beyond as his army of warriors that he could command to do anything. And here he is sitting in this little cave with 400 misfits. Welcome to the comeback journey, David. If you'll stay on the comeback journey, here's the next thing. I watched some guys trying to make a comeback and be the king they were before. I've still got it. Well, you haven't. It's been taken from you. You need to make a comeback and find out what God wants you to got it now and have in your life now. And so comebacks begin the journey. 
back to greatness. And you'll come back if you'll stay faithful and let God restore you and make you, bring you back into His plan for your life. It restores you to God's covenant favor. Men can take it from you for a season, but if you'll stay in the way of the Lord, you have to be restored to the covenant of favor and the call of God on your life. Listen to 2 Samuel 5 verse 3 to 5. It says this, Therefore all the elders of Israel came to the king David at Hebron. And King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. Covenanted before the Lord to fulfill the will and purpose of God. And they anointed David king over all of Israel. And David was 30 years old when he began to reign. This is after Adullam's cave. He wasn't reigning during that time. The Bible's not clear on how long he was there, but it starts when he moved to Hebron and his time there. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and all Judah. And so I want you to see with me, and this is important. I hope I can tie this together so you get it. Comebacks, godly comebacks have three stages. And I don't care who you are, you will have to go through these three stages. Because God's working in you, both to will and to, get, to do of His good pleasure, to bring you into that level of destiny He planned for you all along. The first stage is Adullam's cave. He's hiding in the secret place, his hiding place. That's the first stage. He's only got 400 men and their family and friends, all of them uh, have been uh, disillusioned and discontent. And they're dysfunctional in the secret place. The first stage for any person wanting to make a godly comeback to great leadership or great blessing and favor is the secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High you got to run into Christ, your rock. He's a cleft or a cave in the rock. You've got to run into Him and stay there because this is your restoration stage where you're being preserved and kept. You're hidden and being restored by God. When you're in this stage, which will happen at the beginning of every restoration journey, a comeback, get off social media. Stop flapping your gums like you're still sitting on a royal throne or your marriage is perfect or what. Stop it. Because what leaks out is your vitriol, your bitterness, your hurt, your rejection. No, this is a secret place. Go hide yourself until God begins to work and restore your soul. Hear what I'm saying? This is so important. So many people I, I see and watch and know try to have a three-week restoration period uh, where God just puts them back on the throne of their old life. No, no, God removed you from that for a reason. He's got better things from you. It'll come back if you get restored properly. And so Abdullam's cave is stage number one. It's the hiding place, the secret place with just a few misfits it's where God preserves you and keeps you and you're hidden from public view while God restores your soul. The second stage on a comeback journey from a, a Dullam's cave, they moved to Hebron. Hebron means a small place. A Dullam's cave, a secret place. Let's move now in God to Hebron, a small place. There are now there are thousands gathering around David by now. It's a small place. This is now his preparation stage. He's not there yet. God's helping you make a comeback to even greater things 
This is his preparation stage. And he was seven years there in Hebron learning to serve again. I'm amazed how, how quickly the human heart turns to pride and gets a big head over the smallest of successes. I, I'm amazed. And here David is learning at Hebron. He's learning how to lead as a servant leader, not the king of, of sitting on top of a throne of an empire made by men, but learning to be a servant leader. And maybe the reason that your marriage failed it is you weren't a servant leader. You didn't know how to serve your family or your work or your boss or whatever it might be. And here for seven years, David at Hebron is in the preparation stage in a small place, learning to serve with integrity again. This is so challenging and yet it's so liberating because God wants to take you somewhere. Then the third stage from Adullam's cave, secret place to Hebron, a small place to Jerusalem, a large place. Finally, God brings the king back to Jerusalem, the city of God. And now it's a nation, it's multitudes. He's now at the possession stage. What's happened? This whole journey from when David was, you know, the, the, the song and dance of Israel. He's now coming back into Jerusalem as a king after God's own heart, as a servant leader to lead the nation under God and see great blessing. And he was there for 33 years, reigning as king under God. And the promise is an heir shall never fail from the throne of David, all the generations, because he went through the difficult times, got onto the comeback journey. Listen, it's not too late. You haven't messed up so bad, God can't use you. Oh, men will reject you. No, we don't like the way you failed there. Or you've got these issues that you haven't addressed yet. No, no, God doesn't see. He says, keep on the, keep on the path. Here's my, here's my encouragement to you. Number one, start by finding your secret place. Come back into God and develop intimacy with God. Stop being so busy with royal duties that you lose your incredible intimacy with the God of all grace. Find your secret place. Number two, stay on your comeback path. Stay on your comeback path. Well, I'm learning to be a servant leader and I'm under a guy that's not that good a leader, but this is where God told me to be. Stay on your comeback path. Your comeback is not determined by the people around or over you. It's determined by the anointing and call of God on you. And you have to stay in that place of humility. Stay on, stay on the comeback path. And then number three, secret place. Stay on the comeback path. And then thirdly, set your covenants in God. The things that God has covenanted to do that haven't been taken from you, can't be removed from you by any circumstance or mind of man. They're still covenanted in God. Renew the covenants and set yourself steadfast. I believe to see the covenant God fulfill His covenant blessing and destiny for my life. I'm staying on the path and I've learned some stuff about the secret place of servant leadership all over again. I, I Today, I know this word is for people. You may not be a high-level preacher or leader or, you know, command a great pulpit, but you may in your own world have fallen from grace, been expelled, kicked out of whatever it is, and you see it as injustice. You've got to stop right there and say, I've got to escape this place. It's everyone else's fault but mine. My first decision is to ask the right questions. Why am I here? What is God doing with me? And how do I make a comeback? What do I do next to make a comeback? 
And you'll be amazed how God starts to order your steps, open the right doors, bring the right people into your world. And all of a sudden, your eyes become clear again to see this is the way of the Lord. Your ears are opened again to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and everything starts to change. Doesn't happen over a weekend or in a conference altar call. It happens because you have made the right commitment to a comeback. And I'm praying today there'll be people that hear this word and say, that's God's word for me. I'm going to start my comeback as of this moment. Surrender yourself to God. Open yourself to Him and say, God, I am going to be your comeback king. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you. Something's happening in people's hearts. Father, today, may this word go to the nations. May this word find people hiding, scratching at the gates of the world, hiding from, in fear from all those that have railed against them. Whatever the reason, may this word find them and may they be set free to make the right decision, ask the right questions and start the right journey to become one of your comeback kings, that a generation would know that God is no respecter of persons. He'll use any that humble themselves, submit themselves to Him. He will cause them to have great influence in their world for God and for good. We declare it today over your life in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Hey, God bless you. See you again next week. Amen.